Welcome to another Singularity of the Day. Today's question, how do I set up and use the remote solver for SolidWorks flow simulation? Well, let's first take a look at the installations. We'll have installs for the remote solver as well as the clients. Now for our clients, it's pretty obvious. We'll have SolidWorks and flow simulation installed on any computers that we want flow installed on. For the remote solver, we do need SOLIDWORKS and Flow Simulation. And this has to be the same major release version and service pack as our client. So now that we have the installations covered, how are we going to license? Well, there's a couple options. Network licensing, where all of our installations would be using the same serial numbers and when we initiate a remote solve on a client computer, it recognizes the license it's using and it does not pull an additional SOLIDWORKS or flow simulation license. That's right. The client holds the SOLIDWORKS and flow simulation license and just uses the components of flow simulation on the remote solver. So SNL kind of makes it easy. We have a couple serial numbers or just one serial number used among our installations and it's shared. But what about cases for an individual serial number? An activation based. Well, for all of our clients, we will have those individual activations. But what about our remote solver? Do we need an activation? In fact, we do not. So we could use any valid serial number to get the SOLIDWORKS and Flow Simulation components installed, but it does not have to be activated. Because when the client initiates the remote solve, it's just looking for those Flow Simulation components on the remote solver computer and be able to utilize them. So let's take a look how we will do that. Once we have a project set up and ready to run, you'll see the options for our CPU and memory usage. Where I could either run it local on this computer or at a new computer. This gives me an option to specify the computer name. So this is how you would normally connect to a computer and I like to use the command prompt to do a ping or a telnet to verify the communication, but let's see how it works for us. So specify the computer name, the port, and we'll click add. If everything works successfully, we'll see the computer added to the list. Now this is where you can potentially run into a couple challenges. Either it can't find the computer, the other computer doesn't have the right number of components installed on it. Again, make sure that you have the same major release and service pack installed. The other thing to take a look at is opening up the command prompt and doing a couple tests. One of them is a ping. So we can ping the computer that's desired and make sure it's able to get that replies back. Make sure we don't have any lost packets. Connection looks good. So that's test number one. If that fails, you might want to take a look at other firewall or connection options. Maybe get your IT involved to make sure that you can make this type of connection. The next step up here is doing a telnet. Now what's nice about the telnet is that we can actually specify the port that we're using to connect to the destination. So in this case, 30, 95, 0. Hit enter. If everything comes back good and green, we should see a blank screen. And indeed we do. So that's why I was able to come up here to obviously recognize the correct components are available. And now I can select it right from my list. So hopefully this gives you a good sense of what it takes to install license and use the remote solver capability in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. 